hey guys, I hope you enjoyed my little intro. This is just the first one of hopefully many upcoming Halloween tutorials for this year. It's kind of a little bit Suicide Squad inspired, but mainly um, it's just a sad, badass clown that I think looks kind of sexy, but not too much. It still looks eerie enough, like in a positive way. And it's very easy, so it's also appropriate for beginners. So let's jump right into it. First thing I'm doing is I'm just taking a white eyeliner pencil and just simply sketching out where I want my design to go. I sketched it out before on a piece of paper, so I just made a sketch of myself and then just watched out for where my drawings have to go. So I decided to put two pointy ends in just coming down to my boobs and then the endings or beginnings, depending on how you see things, um, out on my shoulders, coming back to my shoulder blades. So you can't really see the beginning or endings of the line from uh, the front side. I'm drawing, this is the basic line, and then drawing a second line. Just as you can see here, it was a little bit trial and error, but this should just be the clown design. It's actually meant to be uh, carved in, so it's going to be a wound, at least I hope it looks like a wound, because it's not really any special effects makeup involved. I also sketched in um, the basic width of the letters I'm going to put on my chest, and also sketched on the letters, which I decided later that I shouldn't have done this, because I'm putting foundation over top anyways. As my foundations, I'm mixing up the Cryolin TV paint stick in white, a clown white, and a regular foundation. I decided to go for an off-white shade, Initially, my plan was to keep the face like black and white only, but then I decided that it has to look some kind of hum human-like, because then it would be more realistic, so I decided to go for a really, really pale foundation shade. Starting off with my face, I'm blending outwards from the center, and then also covering my neck, and sadly also the things I've sketched on, but I'm avoiding the uh, um, center part of the two lines, so I'm just covering my chest area and my neck. You will see in just a second. I'm just going right on the outside of the line, just to also highlight and kind of separate it from my, uh, from my chest, from the tanner area in the middle of the two lines. This line in the middle you also want to keep dark, as you can see here. Then I'm taking a lip pencil and I'm sketching out, again, uh, the lettering. So I'm writing circles. You can write anything that you think is fitting, but I think circles for a side clown is just appropriate. And I'm also, uh, I'm also doing like jagged letters, so they are not perfect and they also shouldn't be. Now I'm drawing in the letters with some red face paint. Alternatively, if you want it to stay for a long time, you can also use alcohol activated paint. But since I'm only doing the tutorial, I'm doing uh, this with water activated paint. This is just very easy because in the end it will just look like a wound, but you only need some face paint in red and black and some fake blood. And it's still very effective. I'm also doing this red lining technique with the two lines that I've drawn on my chest. And now I'm taking a very, very thin brush. Make sure it's very, very tiny and you can work really precisely with it. And some black body paint just to deepen up certain areas of the cut. This is just there to give some depth to the wound and to give the illusion that the wound in some places is deeper than in others, which naturally it would be like this because... If someone would carve out on our chest, of course, it wouldn't be always the same depth. So this is great to add to a realistic effect at the end, because once we put fake blood overneath, you won't really see that you've drawn over the lines with black. It would just kind of look deeper, if that makes any sense. Just don't rush this process. It takes a lot of time, and it's kind of hard, like, on the side where you with the hand you paint, but it will pay off in the end, I promise. Also do the same thing with the letters, by the way. 
Now I'm taking a cream blusher. This one is by NYX, but it doesn't really matter as long as it's a rosy uh, color. This I'm just using to shade around the cut to give the illusion of irritation. But you don't want to go too close to the initial carvings because when someone would carve into our skin, usually uh, with such a deep laceration, the skin around the cut would be swollen, which is why we are also leaving that gap and only adding the uh, depth back in, the irritation back in more at the outside of the wound. And this is also why we're going to highlight in between the two lines on our chest with some more of our foundation. And then I'm setting everything with powder just to make sure that it lasts a longer time. And then I'm going straight to my eyeshadow. Using an eyeshadow base, of course, especially if you want it to last for a long time. And then I'm starting off with some gray eyeshadow. I'm just using this in my crease and I'm blending this very very roughly. You want to go for a grungy look but you still want it to look kind of uh, sexy so I'm going more for a feline shape and also putting the gray more at the outer part of the eye just dragging it outwards towards the temples just to give a very dramatic uh, eyeshadow effect. Then using some black eyeliner blending this out with an eyeshadow brush and then topping it off with some black eyeshadow. All the eyeshadows that I'm using today in this tutorial are by Cryolan and I will do my best to find out the colors and leave them below in the description box for you. But you want to definitely use a black base underneath your eyeshadow just to make everything really pop. Make sure that the black is really intense and deep. You don't want to have uh, any skin peeking through on your eyelid because this will destroy the scariness and the eeriness of this look. Of course, this look would be killer if you put some white contacts in or some other kind of colored contacts. It would just be awesome. Switching brushes here. I'm using a pencil brush just to give me some more depth in the crease with the black. And also pulling it outwards more dramatically with this more tiny brush. And then blending everything out with the gray shadow. Here you can see me tight lining to fill in any little gaps between the lash line and the upper lid. And then also lining the lower lash line for added intensity and also to add to this cat eye shape. Then I'm taking a black eyeshadow and just smoking out the lower lash line, connecting the lower to the upper lid. The lower to the upper lid, the lower lid. No. Okay, I'm just, you can see what I'm doing. <laughs> and blending everything out with the same blend pencil brush and the gray eyeshadow. Smoking the color out more towards my temples and going really low on the lower lash line. Now I'm taking some black eyeshadow on the same brush and dragging this down roughly on my cheeks. The longest being the longest in the middle and going shorter the more you go to the outside to kind of add to this kind of clown triangle look that they often have on, your, on their face. But this should just look like... Um, the character has been crying and it's just very sad, you know. And you also want to do this above the brow on the forehead and connecting the look above the brow to the upper lid action. So everything looks nice and seamless. Also, don't blend this too much, but also don't blend it too less. So we want to find the perfect middle so it still adds to the look. Then going on with the eyes with a shimmery grey eyeshadow on the inner corners of the lid just to give some dimension back. And then taking the same eyeliner we've used on the eyes to outline our lips. Just getting the shape right, you know, you can overdraw your lips however you like. And then fill them in, make sure that there's no skin peeking through, also not at the corners of the mouth. You want to have everything nice and deep and black. And... This will also last a very long time because it's eyeliner. It's meant to stay in a waterline, of course. Then getting the shape right, which is still important, although you're a sad clown. And then dragging out the outer corners in kind of a smile shape. Go for the natural direction of your cheekbones. I almost forget to, forgot to mention that I previously contoured with some gray eyeshadow just to give the face some shape back in. 
Then I'm taking some eyeshadow and I'm smudging slightly the outer corners of the lip and also setting the eyeliner on the lips to keep everything nice and matte and lasting long. Taking some shoelace, cutting off the outer two bits, wrapping this around my neck as kind of uh, a tie kind of thing. So as if you have been a slave to someone, that's what I wanted to kind of impersonate with this. Then taking some red and black face paint, putting it underneath the shoelace and then some fake blood just to add to the goriness. The shoelace is also the part where I will take the most fake blood, but I will also take some on my lacerations and also on the letters. Varying the amount of the fake blood as you go, so there are some places with less fake blood and some places with more fake blood, Make sure it's the kind of fake blood that dries down, so you don't constantly have to reapply it if you want to wear this makeup out all night. And then also letting some drip down from my neck. Then I decided that the eyeshadow look lacks some color, so, that, so I'm applying some red eyeshadow, dragging it out towards my temples, just kind of smudging it out a little bit. And then some iridescent shimmering purple eyeshadow, as a highlight on my cheekbones, on my brow bone, and finally in my inner corners. That's the completed look. I hope you found this one interesting. I loved to make this look. I think it turned out so well, especially in photos. It looks so dope, especially with red hair. Have fun with your creations. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!